Delta is green. Oh, sorry. I have control. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh. 
Yes, yes, I'm fine. All right, sir. We're going to be bringing out all the rest of the people here. Can you please help identify those individuals? Yes, of course. Can you turn around? You can put your hands down, sir. This gentleman yes, here. He's, he with, he's with us. Yes, he's employed by us. Is that the complete staff that you have? Okay. Yes. Thank you. That is All our right. work, please. Jordan's coming in. Uh -huh. Better back, coming in. Esto es Jackie, coño, lo que yo voy a hacer con esta cabrona, caramba. Get up, get up, come on, let's go.
My name is Thomas Nicoletti, and I am the Firearms Program Coordinator for the Hostage Rescue Team. Individual weapons available to the HRT assault team include the following. The high standard suppressed 22 caliber pistol, the Smith & Wesson Model 13 and Model 19 in 357 Magnum caliber, and the Browning High Power 9mm pistol. Individual shoulder weapons include the Heckler & Koch 9mm MP5 SD3 submachine gun equipped with an aim point projector. The HRT utilizes the Remington 870 shotgun as both a gas delivery system and an alternate breaching method. The mainstay assault weapon on the HRT is the H&K MP5 A3 submachine gun. Also available are H&K's Model 33 rifle and 223 caliber with both the fixed and retractable stock configuration. Suppressive fire or support weapons include the M79 grenade launcher, 40 millimeter cal caliber capable of delivering high explosive, illumination, and beehive rounds. The M60 E3 machine gun is used in a support fire role. Individual equipment utilized by the hostage rescue team serves two purposes. The first, ease of accessibility to and portability of assault and communications equipment needed during a hostage rescue mission. And, most importantly, protection of the assault team member. Specialized equipment developed by the HRT Research and Development Branch include the following. Blast-resistant Lexan goggles, fire-retardant Nomex hood, jumpsuit, and gloves, load-bearing vest, body armor, a quick-draw holster, rappel or climbing harness, and protective assault boots. The development and improvement of equipment is a continuing process on the hostage rescue team. My name is Stephen Wiley. I'm the sniper team leader. The sniper team is composed of 13 members, myself and 12 others who are divided into a blue and gold section. Each section has three two-man teams and a team leader. Our mission is twofold. First, we're the eyes and ears of the special agent in charge at the crisis point, the HRT commander, and the overall HRT team. When the HRT is deployed to a crisis area, generally a sniper section will be immediately deployed to the crisis point. They will get into a sniper position so that we have 360 degree coverage of the crisis site and immediately relay information regarding the building and crisis point to me via the radio and I would be located in the sniper talk at the holding area. In addition to providing intelligence information to me that each sniper would be taking photos of the crisis point. These photos would be returned to the holding area and developed by personnel from our headquarters who deploy to situations with us. They would have these films developed within 45 minutes at which time they would be placed within the sniper talk. On the board here I have uh, some photos from an exercise that we did which depicts the crisis point which is here and its surrounding area. These photos would be used by the assault teams in order to plan for their assault. Down below, we have close-up shots of each side of the crisis point building. And as you can see, it shows all the openings and terrain around the building. Our second mission is to provide support to the assault group coming into the crisis point. We would give them cover support in the event a patrol came out and found them in position. When the assault is ready to go down, we would again provide support cover fire and eliminate any threat to the assault team. I would like to explain some of the equipment that we use in our job. We have to be prepared to operate in both a urban and rural area. In an urban situation, we would take camera gear such as this, which has a 400 millimeter lens. We obviously could not use this type of lens in a rural environment. We would use a much smaller lens such as this. Each sniper team member has either a night vision goggle or a night vision monocular. Team members also have laser range finders which are accurate within 5 meters from a distance of a minimum 30 meters to a maximum of 10,000 meters. 
In an urban environment, we might have to remove glass from a window, and we would use a suction cup like this in order to remove it. These are some of the uniforms that we have, and we would wear a particular uniform depending on the environment we're operating in. The weapons that we use, a match M14. We have a night scope mounted on a Heckler & Koch MP5 suppressed weapon. And our primary sniper weapon is a composite weapon made by the gunsmiths at the FBI Academy. This weapon consists of a Macmillan fiberglass stock, a Remington 700 action, a can jar trigger, a 10 power fixed unital scope, and a heart barrel. This weapon is, will shoot one quarter inch groups at 200 meters. I would now like to introduce Hal Metcalf, who is a sniper team member and is wearing a ghillie suit. The term ghillie is actually a Gaelic word meaning gameskeeper, who in the olden days used to go out and count the amount of game owned by a king. In order to facilitate this, he needed some type of camouflaged outfit. You have now seen some of the equipment used by HRT snipers. My name is Jamie Atherton, and I am the explosive coordinator for the hostage rescue team. The explosive program in the hostage rescue team can basically be broken down into four areas. We analyze threats, we neutralize those threats, we divert with explosives, and we breach. So before you are some of the tools that we use to accomplish these different missions. Off here, you can see some of the tools that you would basically find in any bomb squad uh, throughout the nation. They help us in the analyzing and in the neutralizing of, of any threats, explosive threats that we would find during our assault. Uh, we also have the capability here of using the remote control system, the M122, a basic military remote control system. Probably the largest area that we deal with is breaching. And that breaching area can be broken down into two different categories. The first being mechanical breaching, which is what you would find uh, throughout your traditional law enforcement breaching. Things such as battering rams, sledgehammers, hammers, uh, window wands, uh, stuff along this nature. We also have the ability to have several different tools which use either hydraulic or pneumatic tools. These type of tools are generally found in your different rescue teams such as power saws and whatnot. We carry those with us as well. Basically, these are the tools of the HRT breacher. I'm Dennis Hughes, a special agent in the Bureau's technically trained agent program. The HRT's technical section consists of myself and two Bureau electronic technicians. Before us is some of the communications gear that we use. Our primary piece of equipment is a Motorola MX360 Handy Talkie. It has two modes, a secure and plain text. We have to be air transportable to go anywhere in the country. So what we've done for our mobile needs is we've taken a Converticom, a 60 watt power amplifier, and a magnetic mount, and this will fit in any vehicle in about 20 seconds. We plug it into the cigarette lighter. Here is how the radio comes out of it. Okay, we've got a problem with scanners in the FBI, people receiving our, our transmissions. What we do to prevent that, I'll give you an example. Here is the plain text. Testing one, two, three. When I go into secure mode, here is what the person's gonna receive. Testing one, two, three. Helps our operations a lot. Some of the other things we have is a suitcase repeater that'll go anywhere. We can set it on top of buildings, mountains, battery powered, or AC. It goes with two antennas, an omnidirectional or a directional antenna. We have a high frequency radio which can go into the Bureau's network. And most important is this PRC-117, a military radio. You turn it on, gives you the voltage in the battery, and if you have any faults in the circuits. The nice thing about this is it scans at 200 channels per second. Two things are important about that. Number one, nobody's going to receive you, and number two, nobody's going to jam you. And finally, we are entering the space age in the Bureau with satellite communications, which is currently under development. This gives you an idea of what the HRT can do with communications.
My name is Charlie Prouty. I'm the team leader for the hostage rescue team maritime unit. We have a limited maritime capability. We were trained by the U.S. Navy SEALs in open circuit scuba and combat swimmer techniques. We have the ability to conduct underwater searches to look for such items as, uh, as evidence, a wreckage, or drowned victims. We also have the ability to conduct an underwater hull search to determine whether any uh, explosive devices have been placed on a hull. We also have the ability to conduct a tactical boarding of a vessel and execute close quarter combat to effect a hostage rescue. All of the equipment that we use that you see here has been approved by the U.S. Navy. The reason for this is twofold. The Navy conducts extens extensive testing of all their equipment prior to approving it. Therefore, we know we're using a quality piece of gear. Additionally, all of our training and requalification is done with the U.S. Navy, and uh, they require that our equipment be compatible with theirs. This will give you a general idea of what we're using. We have here a twin 72 cubic inch steel tank. We use a Conshell 14 regulator. We use a buoyancy compensator or Mark IV life jacket. Fins and face masks are used at the discretion of the diver, whatever he feels comfortable with. And all the divers have full wetsuits so we can dive in any water conditions. We also have a, uh, a life raft, a rubber inflatable craft. It takes seven men and equipment and is powered by a 15 horsepower outboard. That'll give you a, a general overview, very briefly, of the type of equipment that's being used by the maritime unit. My name is Special Agent Jay Mulholland. I am the medical program coordinator for the hostage rescue team. The program was established in order to support the team's training and operational missions. Every member of the HRT has received training in basic life support, and 12 members of the team have received additional training as emergency medical technicians. Displayed today are some of the items of equipment to include the team's basic trauma kit, which includes items of bleeding and bandaging management, as well as instruments to determine a patient's vital signs, the individual EMT pack, which can be used in conjunction with the assault gear, the medical oxygen therapy and airway management kit includes the Robert Shaw demand valve resuscitator, which allows us to administer oxygen at 100% levels to a patient on demand or by positive pressure in cases of CPR. It also allows us to administer the oxygen and transport using the clear face mask. The bag valve resuscitator, which is part of the team trauma kit, and the portable suction unit, which is operated on an internal bellows system and does not require the use of batteries or oxygen in, in order to operate it. The various sizes of face masks allow us to administer resuscitative efforts to a patient regardless of size or age. The shock therapy department includes intravenous fluids administered to sick as well as injured patients, and all members of the team have received training in this particular skill. Lastly, the medical anti-shock trouser, which is a pneumatic counter-pressure device which works by forcing air against the lower extremities and auto-transfusing blood to the major organs of the body. The air pump of the trousers can be operated by foot or by hand. This then constitutes the items of the HRT medical package. My name is Horace Mewarn. I am the intelligence coordinator on the staff which supports the hostage rescue team. Besides myself, there are four other members of the staff. During the training phase of the team, the staff is responsible for writing uh, scenarios and training exercises. During a crisis situation, the staff is responsible for establishing and maintaining a tactical, tactical operations center, also known as a TOC. D displayed on the boards behind me are information which will be available to the team during a training exercise or in a real life situation. The intelligence would be gathered from many sources to include deployed elements of the team and any interviews done by, staff, by the staff or other agents. We would display the demands and deadlines and we would try to gather as much information about the terrorist as possible. If we can identify a terrorist, we would like to have his picture and any descriptive data. Our deployed sniper observer teams would try to supply us with descriptive data of the other terrorist. We would also try to identify 
any weapons which the terrorists are using, and also identify any hostages involved in the situation to include descriptive data and pictures. The weather would be important to the team in planning for this final operation, and we would try to identify what the uh, inside of the building looks like and have our deployed sniper observer teams furnish us with photographs of the outside of the building. The information we would supply to the team would be very important to the team in its planning for the final assault.